Hello everyone, welcome to William and the Magic Box. Today on our show, we are going to have Renee. Renee is from Wisconsin in the USA. So let's see what Renee has to say. Enjoy the interview. Hello. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, I can. How, how are awesome. you, Renee? I'm good, how are you? Very well, thank you so much for taking the time of such day for the interview. Thank you. Of course. Right, so just before we start the game, am I saying your name, am I saying your name right, Rene? Yes, yeah. Rene, Rene tell yes. me where you're from. Um, uh, I just recently moved, probably two, three weeks ago, to Wisconsin. Um, I used to live in Illinois, so it's been a bit of a change right now. But yeah, I live in Wisconsin right now. And why Wisconsin? Um, it's cheaper here. Um, I still work in Illinois, uh, but it's just cheaper um, to live out here. And I kind of already had my mindset to move to Wisconsin prior to um, me moving. So it was just kind of those things that it was the time, it was the right place. So it just happened. Right. And uh, Illinois, it's quite close to Wisconsin or is, is it different far away the state? Yeah, no, they're right next to each other. So, um, again, when I say like I still work, there's probably like 20 minutes and I, I'm already in Illinois. So right. it's um, it's right on the border. I moved right next to it. So Amazing. Very close then. Very close. Yeah, very <laughs> close. Yeah. And uh, what do you do for Lee, Renee? I am a mortgage disposition uh, rep. So I usually just fill out a bunch of uh, paperwork for bankruptcies, foreclosures, and uh, do a lot of admin work. So just work on computers the whole day so <laughs> so tell me a little bit about your job what is it about um it's um again it's very admin oriented so i'm usually just filling out forms get information from uh people that file bankruptcies so i just have to put it into the system and because we deal with loans then we have to be notified whether or not somebody's going to be able to pay for the loan or not. So then if somebody files bankruptcy or they're in foreclosure, then we have to be notified. And I just kind of let the company know that somebody is not going to be able to pay. So um, it's very straightforward, just very lots of paperwork and uh, no interaction with um, other people, just uh, very computer related. I see. Very good. Right, so just before we start our journey, William and the Magic Box, um, I would you like you to tell me something interesting about yourself. Um, I I like to write poetry, um, and I think that's very interesting because I don't I haven't met anybody else that writes like in person. So um, it's always kind of like having to go to blogs or to different websites to find other people that write. Um, I like to. Uh, I don't know, I just, um, writing has always been very uh, cathartic and very uh, relaxing to me. So sometimes I like to show people the poetry I've written and I'm looking to publish some of my poems as well. Uh, but that's, I think that's probably one of the things that I, I don't tell like everybody that I like to write, but it's one of those things that I would say make me interesting. Very interesting. Actually, when I was checking your profile, I could see um, there on Facebook saying you like poetry. And also, yeah. it was saying that you like singing as well. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, I used to be... Um... I used to be in show choir and in, in like four different choirs in my high school. Um, don't know how I made it in, but um, I, I like singing and it's terrible, but it's just something that I like to do either like in the shower or just when I'm just sitting around here and belching out a song. So I think you are just being modest. I think you are a good singer. <laughs> <laughs> no, but thank you. Right, Renee, so are ready to go on a beautiful journey through your memories in life and to share your point of views? Sure. Welcome to William and the Magic Box. So I have here a lot. Box full of random fun questions, okay? So I'm just okay. going to play a song now just for us to move a little bit before the first question, okay? Yeah. Let's do it. <laughs> um, like it's very lively music. 
<laughs> yes, I like Brazilian music. <laughs> oh, really? Oh, great. Yes. Renee, so just before we start the journey, uh, through the game, if there is a question that you don't want to talk about for some reason, you don't want to answer, I always can change, okay? It's all very friendly. Okay. Sure. First question for you is, which book had a big influence on you? Um, I haven't, I haven't read a lot of books, but, um, I probably say that I've read at least 10 books in my life that I just kind of always read. Um, one of the two that I've really kind of drawn into, and that's only because in high school they make you read it, was The Great Gatsby. Uh, and there was just something about the journey that he goes through and how bad he wants to belong somewhere that he's not welcome and his addiction and his uh, his point of view on life. Uh, I'm not gonna say they're parallel to mine, but it, his journey is something that it's always something that's stuck to me and seeing how sometimes it's, it's not always greener on the other side. So no matter how hard he tried to be part of that society and try to be part of um, something that he wasn't born into, uh, is something that I feel like a lot of us try to do as well. Like if we're trying to be skinny, if we're trying to be taller, if we're trying to do something that you can do, but if you're just not, it's something that if you just come to terms with early on, that you'd probably be happier with what you have already. So. Absolutely, I totally agree. I think uh, the older we get, we don't give more attention to those um, voices around, you know, that, right. uh, you know, like saying, oh, you, you should be taller, you should be shorter, you should be skinner, you should be exactly. uh, a bit more, right. you know, the overweight, uh, all those things. I think uh, the older you get, it's just the voice getting slow and slow and not louder as before. For right, sure. exactly. Right. Next question, Renee, let's do it. Next question for you is, yes. right, if you could meet yourself when you were 15 years old again, with advice you'd give to yourself? That's funny. Um, I just actually asked somebody this question yesterday. Wow. I asked them this very question. I'm like, what would you say to yourself when you were younger? So that's, that's funny. Um, I think it kind of goes back to my previous question, the answer that I gave. It's to not to not put so much pressure on myself and try to be something else to just fully accept or try to accept as early as possible that you can't please everyone and that no matter what you do there's always going to be someone or a group of people that are not going to like what you say or what you do and as long as you're not hurting anybody else you should be happy doing what you like to do um there's things like either with singing or with um little bit of uh, random acting that I did for, like for school um, or just playing like uh, trading card games like Yu-Gi-Oh and stuff like that. Those are some of the things that I kind of kept hitting from people and I feel like it was detrimental to me because I could have done a lot more with either singing, with writing, with um, like a business or anything like that and I feel like it kind of like withdrew me from that. So I feel like I would tell myself to not, not care so much about what other people are going to say about it because they're going to say something about it anyway. Absolutely. And I think, as, as you mentioned, um, you could be the perfect person, like there's no perfect, but it could be the person um, that's Very fitting perfect. all the standards that the society, society say, even though they're always going to be someone who dislike you for some reason. Right. Sometimes you haven't done anything bad to this person, exactly. this person not <laughs> done anything bad to you. But even though it's, a, it's like a spiritual thing, you know, it's something that uh, it, can, it doesn't match. And actually it's okay, it's okay uh, right. that as well. And I think saying that we need those people around us or to, to cross our path because without them, it would be boring. We wouldn't learn anything. We didn't see the other side. And I think everything counts. I think every people or every person who comes into our lives and leaves a positive message or a negative message or a lesson is necessary. I think all of them are necessary and you should be grateful for them as well. Exactly. Cool. I agree. <laughs> Ready for another one? Yes. Let's do it. Amazing, you start dancing, <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Rene, I'm before, the now. <laughs> before the next question, tell me, um, what was, what's the big inspiration for you to write your poetry and how did it start it? 
Um, I think it, I used to just think of lines. Uh, when I would listen to music, I would anticipate the next line and it was normally never what I thought it was going to be. And then the song would just go into a different direction. And I would be like, no, I kind of wanted the song to say this. So I started writing one or two lines that I'm like, this is what I wanted this song to say. And sometimes I would sing those lines out loud. Um, but other times I would just write it down and then I would just forget about it uh, either on my phone, like the notes or just on a piece of paper. Then I got a notebook specifically for that reason. Um, and I believe that the first poem that I actually wrote was like in my senior year in high school, where I put like a bunch of lines that I had together and I tried to make a story out of it. And I really fell in love with the process of writing. Um, and I think that most of the inspiration really comes from just life experiences. Like if I have a, a bad breakup or if I find somebody that I really, really like, or uh, if my friend is going through something, hearing stories or my friend's experiences, also, it kind of, it triggers that in me to start writing something. And sometimes I do send it to them and I'm like, hey, remember how we spoke about this this time? I'm like, I wrote something. Amazing. Like, I'm not gonna, like, I'm not gonna show anybody. I'm not gonna tell anybody who's it about. I just wanted you to read it. And I, there's been a lot of positive feedback and it does kind of like um, really describe how they're feeling and they, they like, they like reading it because they're like, okay, so people understand what I'm going through too. So, um, yeah. I see. And for you to write the poetries, um, there is like you can write any time or you need to be inspired or you need to, of course, not every day you have this, okay, I can write any time or no, you just need, it comes naturally the way for you to, to write those. There's a couple of different ways. Sometimes when I just think of a random line that I really like mm -hmm. and I'm just grocery shopping, just randomly, I think of something and I'm like, I gotta write it down. So I just go on my phone and I write it down. Other I times, it, it's kind of silly, but um, if I go to the store and I buy like a journal, like I see a nice journal that I see, I'm like, okay, I'm gonna get this journal and I have to write something tonight. So I go home and I open my new journal and it kind of like gets me going to write about something. And I could literally just pick up something and be like, I wanna write about uh, falling in love with uh, the person, like my neighbor that I see every day from their window that they come out and say hi to me or whatever. I just, I, if I want to write something, I want to just write it down and be able to see something written in my new um, notebook. Um, or just listening to music, again, listening to music or watching TV. And I'm like, oh my God, I feel, I feel so bad for this person. Or I'm like, oh my God, they fell in love. And it like inspires me. I'm like, oh my God, I would say this to him or I would say this to her and it just, it gets me going too. So it's, it can be at any time and I can literally sit down too and be like, all right, I wanna write about the interview today. I could say something about it. So um, it, it it's different every time. Oh my God, amazing. I, I would love to see your, um, your little, uh, your poetry regarding this experience you are sharing today. My God, be amazing. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> amazing. <laughs> Next question for you is, are you a cat or a dog person? And if you could be an animal, which one that would be and why? Uh, a lot of people are gonna hate me for this, but I am not an animal person. Like I, for some reason, like I've had my, I have two siblings, two sisters, and they've always had pets. They've had dogs, they've had cats, hamsters, goldfish, all types of animals. So. I've been around them, but if I had to choose between cats and dogs, it would be dogs. I think they're, I think they're pretty cool. I just wouldn't be able to have one or I don't feel like I would be a good pet owner. So, but yeah, definitely a dog. And as far as an animal, um, I'm not sure if you're familiar with it, but um, it's called a Quetzal. It's, it's, right it's a, the, the Quetzal, it's like a South American bird. It's like this tiny, tiny bird. It's green and it's got like long feathers, kind of like if it was wearing like maybe a dress with a big gown. And for some reason, that bird has always like, I always go back to that bird. Like I draw it, like I sketch too a lot. So I always draw that bird anywhere. And even in my signature, I try to put something that kind of looks like a long tail. <laughs> um, but that would be the animal. For some reason, I just, I find them so fascinating. They're so tiny and just so like beautiful, so. There you go. You like one animal, one bird. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> one at a time, so. <laughs> For sure. <laughs> Next question. 
Next question for you is, what do you think people need to know about each other before they get married? Wow, uh, before marriage. Um, I think everything. And when I mean everything, I mean just... There's a post that I saw online that said that you need to discuss finances. You need to discuss your goals. You need to discuss whether you want kids or not. You need to discuss um, even the smallest of details, like how do how do you put the toilet paper in, like for it to do the top or the bottom. I'm like, it's so many things that you have to, you kind of have to live with a person a couple of days to be like, am I going to be able to put up with this? forever and um i know it's probably not something that everybody can do but it's definitely something that i would ask people to do like and also communication i feel like people just and i don't mean like what's your favorite color or like what kind of movies do you like no i need to know like mental health issues do you have more bad days than good do you um need help financially do you struggle with anything that you think is going to be detrimental to the relationship do you need time alone things some questions may be a little bit too personal but if you're going to be with a person you have to know them on that level too so um communication and the right type of communication not just random questions Absolutely. And I agree as well. I think people, they, they should live together, not even for a few days, but at least for a while before they give the big step. Because yeah. you just see those uh, little habits living together. Do you know what I mean? You can be in a relationship for a very long time, but if you don't yeah. spend like this time, like full time living together and see those little details, that's um, you're just going to find out when you live together and if you give a step before having this experience it can be challenged and sometimes right you know what i mean can can be okay you know what i mean can you can still fit each other it but... can make or break them too so i mean absolutely I mean, yeah. if, especially if you've already um invested time in them like years then you move in together and it's like what happened there absolutely good ready for another one yes let's do it Before the next question, Renee, tell me what you like the most yes. about your job. And of course, there's always a challenging part as well, what that would be. Um, with my job, I actually just started in at the end of November slash December. Mm -hmm. So it's um, I'm relatively new to the company. Um, I like it. I've always liked office jobs. There's just something about the aesthetic of being in an office and like, dressing up and it, for some reason I don't care what I'm doing as long as people dress up and you have to like show up and look presentable I like it um in this particular job um, because I don't get to interact with like customers or like people face to face because I used to do retail um it's just kind of like amazing not having to deal with people that are gonna yell or like especially now with everybody having a phone to record and like say a bunch of like really negative things um it's kind of like kind of like a breather like okay I don't have to deal with like actual people I just deal with paperwork and I, I interact with some of my coworkers, but it's it's just nice not having to deal with like people <laughs> in general um, and some of the challenges from this job have just been um, working remotely. Um, it does have, like, I enjoy it, but there's the downside of not having that face-to-face -face communication with coworkers, which I I I love that. Um, but it, it also it, it does make it seem a little bit lonelier because you're not interacting with somebody or having that small talk like how was your weekend or stuff like that because you're too busy to do it uh via messenger or texting or calling somebody because you're busy working <laughs> so um I, I believe that would be probably the challenge of just feeling like you're alone so good one what do you like to cook the most oh my gosh um i have a roommate and he's like a cooking person he loves cooking so i don't have to cook um my mom uh i'm mexican so my mom is very very good in the kitchen but yeah. i learned nothing from mom even though she tried to i just i couldn't i couldn't get in i just i couldn't so um 
I personally, I think the only thing that could probably make myself that would be something presentable to show people would be like scrambled eggs. And that's just probably the most basic thing that you can do. Um, but yeah, no, I have my, uh, my roommate that just happens to be a fantastic cook. So I normally just sit and watch and see how that happens. <laughs> and when, as you say, your mom um, always was cooking, um, what, do, what did you like the most of your mom's cooking, like Mexican food? Um, it's something called uh, chiles rellenos, and it's uh, stuffed uh, like green peppers. There's like cheese inside, and then uh, she puts like a some type of coating on the actual pepper, and it's like mm -hmm. um, it's like egg whites, and then there's like a special sauce that goes on top of it, and it's just like the best thing ever. Like that's my my all time favorite of hers. <laughs> <laughs> you're saying you're from Mexico, but did you grow up in Mexico or you grew up in the U.S.? Um, it was kind of both um, because I was actually born in California and then we were there for five years and then we moved to Mexico and I lived there for five years and we moved back and I lived here for 10 years. So it was kind of like back and forth a little bit at the beginning. So um, I speak Spanish like fluently and I also... Um, um, I learned how to speak English during the first five years that we were here. So I think that's why I'm able to speak both at, more so accurately, I guess. But um, yeah, I, I definitely grew up there too. Which one do you, do you do you feel as your first language? English, for sure. Um, even yeah. though I think in Spanish and I try to say anything, I, like all, it's all in Spanish, then just saying it out loud is English, but... Um, I feel more comfortable speaking English because I've been here now longer, so I speak it more. And the only people that I speak uh, Spanish to would be like direct relatives or every other friend that also speaks Spanish. Just if I don't want to say something out loud in English, I could just <laughs> switch to Spanish. And <laughs> so yes, yeah, so when when somebody speaks Spanish around you, they may be saying something about you. <laughs> Next question. Let's do it. Okay, hey, next question for you is, what is the best advice have you ever received? The best advice I got it from a drunk man at a bar. And I think it's such a strange place to get a advice from, but it's just it just stuck to me ever since then. Um, I, don't, I don't know if he heard the conversation that I was having with my friend, but he just stopped me when my friend went to the bathroom and he's like, can I give you some advice? And I'm like, sure. And he's like, don't ever try to be better than your colleague, your friend, your sibling, your parents. Always try to be better than the person you were yesterday. So don't compete with anybody else. Compete with yourself. And I'm like, what the f I'm like, okay. I'm like, it, it took me um, a couple of minutes to kind of like take all that in. And ever since then, it's something that I've tried to live by and always try to be better uh, for me because ultimately at the end of the day, it's just going to be me right here. Even if I'm with someone, I have to be happy with who I am as well. So That's amazing. Oh my God. I hope you got his number. He's still in touch with this person. <laughs> <laughs> no, and that's the funny thing. It's kind of like... Um, I don't know. It's just, I think it was, I don't know if it was like an angel or something, but it's just weird to say that he was at a bar somewhere. But I think I really needed to hear it at that moment and why it's stuck to me for 20 years now. Like it's, it's been, it's been great um, to go back to it. That's amazing. I'm so happy this question came up to you. I think this person was in the right time. And you, as you said, you needed to hear that. You needed to be, yeah. to, to hear exactly. that for, you know what I mean? For you to be a better person and be the per the better person as you were before, as he said. Right. So it makes all sense. Continually, continually get better, but not for anybody else, just for you. So. Wow. Beautiful, beautiful, <laughs> beautiful. I hope he's watching this interview and he's going to go like, I was the man who did that. <laughs> right. See, wouldn't that be like full circle right there? Like, yeah, 
I, you I never know. That. You never know. Really? Imagine. No, imagine if I'm doing interviews and suddenly I, you know, I invite random people around the globe and suddenly I invite, yeah. I invite him without knowing. And in the beginning of the conversation, he goes like, you know, William, I am the guy who René met in, the, in that bar a few years ago. I'll be like, I would oh, cry. That would be God. so cool. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> The mess is out there. Let's see. Let's see what's going. The universe is going to bring to us. <laughs> <laughs> Next question for you. Let's do it. Before the next one, tell me, as you're saying that you've been in Wisconsin for uh, like short periods of time, um, so far, yeah. what what do you like the most about the, the state or about the vibe uh, where you're living right now? Um, I moved in on March eighth. So it's been almost 20 days. Um, I've been just working just yesterday. I went out with uh, one of my friends and we, um, everything is literally probably like walking distance from me. Um, there's a bunch of restaurants, there's a bunch of stores, like right for me to walk out and do it. Um, so we went to two different, um, like a bar and then we went to a restaurant too. Um, I think that I like that everything is really close to me before I had to drive at least 15, 20 minutes. And even though that's not a lot, um, having that um, be so close to me is just something that um, I've never had before. So I think it's pretty neat to have that um, really close. Amazing. So t and when you yeah. think about Illinois, what's the best memory that uh, it comes to you? Uh, childhood friends and um, I think because I grew up in an apartment complex, uh, there was mm -hmm. always 10, 15 kids that we would all hang out together and um, a lot of memories with this group of friends. Um, uh, we actually still get together like every other year. We'll plan a picnic and everybody now brings their kids and brings their significant other. And it's um, it's really neat because uh, we, we're really close and we have like a group chat and it's, uh, it's really neat to see how far we've come from just being kids playing outside in the dark and just walking around and just being goofballs. But um, it's really neat. So I think that's probably one of the best memories, just childhood friends. That'd be good. Next question is, what is the strangest gift have you ever received? Strangest? Um, I don't think it would be considered a gift, I guess, but, but um, with my ex, for Christmas, this past Christmas, we did like a, um, I don't know if it's called White Elephant or like a gift bag or something like that, where everybody brings a gift and then you just put it in the middle of the room and then everybody just picks one out. And it's it's just, uh, it's just a little tradition that they have. Um, the gift, I brought like a, a puzzle. It's just something like a $5 thing. I got like two blocks that said December 25th. And I'm like, what is this? Like, I thought maybe I was missing the other months and I'm like, is this a calendar? But it just said December 25th. And I'm like, what, <laughs> like, what is this? So I guess it was just kind of like a little place thing, placeholder. I don't know what it was, but it was, it was the strangest thing. I'm like, I don't get this. <laughs> <laughs> you still have those? Do you still have it? Um, I'm pretty sure it's in one of the boxes Somewhere. that we brought. Um, yeah, it's gotta be somewhere here, but yeah, it was the strangest thing. I'm like, cause I'm like, there's missing days here. It just says 25. And <laughs> then I saw the month one. I'm like, it's just four size. And it just says December. I'm like, is this a calendar or just like a day thing? I, I didn't get it. <laughs> Renee, I have three questions left for you. Okay. Let's do it. Yeah. Next question for you is how do you make friends? Oh my god, I don't think I've such a such a weird question. Um, I don't think I go out and make friends. I feel like it just conversations. I usually would make friends when I would go to a party and I would meet a group of people that my friend of uh, my friend knew, and that's how we started to interact. Um, like my best friend, who I consider my best friend now, was dating the girl that my sister was roommates with in college and I just happened to be there one weekend and he was there and then we just started talking and talking and like we had nothing in common but we were just talking and talking and now we're best friends and 
I was in his wedding and he'll probably be in mine, but um, I don't know how you can make friends. I think just speaking to people and just kind of like trying to find something in common or just seeing your difference, this, how they mesh well together. But I don't, I don't think I have an answer for how to make a friend. That's the answer. I think that people, you know, there are no rules. I think the way is just being yourself and genuinely people crossing your, your life and you, you know, being out there and uh, interact with people. As you said, it was a coincidence that this person was roommate with your right. best. So it's all, it's all about that. <laughs> right. Two questions left for you. Mm -hmm. Let's do it. René, before the next question, um, you know the world has been upside down for the last two years regarding the COVID crisis, yeah? What's the, big, the biggest positive impact that the crisis brought into your life and what's the biggest um, challenge uh, that brought so far? Uh, during, uh, the, during 2020, I, I was living with my sister and my mom was living there too. Um, we we normally all had different schedules for work so we all were never home at the same time so we were all very even though we lived together we never spent time together when the pandemic hit um they both weren't able to work because they got laid off and i was the only one that was working but i was working from home so it kind of brought us all together like back home and we spend more time together and I feel like we spend more time together during the first three or four months that we have in the past five years and I wow. think that's something that I've been really grateful for because um it just I don't know when we would have made the time to be together if it wasn't like forced that we all stayed together um but I think that's probably one of the biggest things that I'm definitely grateful for something so terrible happening is that it brought us all together and we all were able to communicate and just be able to see what's going on in each other's lives like more than we normally did so um that was definitely the good part I guess the challenge was just feeling lonely even though you were communicating with my like I was communicating with my family not being able to go out and just not even like go out places just to be able to see a neighbor see my friend or check up on somebody and you really you really kind of realize that you need to have some sort of social interaction and um, hug your friend or say hello or hang out just do nothing and just see people so Good. Next question for you is, do you have any nicknames? Oh my God, that's so funny. Um, I have like 30, 30 different ones. Every single wow. person I meet kind of gives me a nickname for some reason. Um, but I have um, from my group of friends from before, they call me Foods, like F-O-O-D-S, like food, Foods. Um, <laughs> and it's because of a video game. Um, uh, my family calls me Lou because of my first name. Um, my my nephews also call me Lulu. Um, I literally have at least... Oh, and when I used to write first, I used to have a pen name, and it was Noah. So that's how I introduced myself to my best friend. He still has me on his phone as Noah, even though my name <laughs> is not Noah. So um, literally every time I meet someone and people around me, everybody's calling me different names. Wow. But I know that they're calling me, so I'm like, I, I understand where they're where they're saying. But yeah, I, I have like six or seven different ones. <laughs> <laughs> Which one do you like the most? Which one sounds more um, like nice to you? Um, I, I believe foods only because it's from that group of friends from years ago. Um, and it's just because it reminds me of the video game that we used to play together. So uh, my little sister st still calls me that every now and then. Oh. She'll be like, foods, what are you doing? And I'm like, okay. I'm like, yeah, it, it kind of takes <laughs> me back. But it's kind of neat. Uh -oh. Sweet, very sweet. Ready for the last one? Yes. Let's do it. Last question. Renee, but before the last question, people watch the interview. Would you like to start uh, writing poetry? Um, what would be your best piece of advice for those people? I think it's just to start. Um, there is no, I, I don't think that there's good or bad poetry. I just think 
there is no rhyme or reason to it either. It doesn't have to rhyme. It doesn't have to be 16 pages long. It can be two lines. It can be a sentence. It could be anything. If you feel something and you want to write it down and you want to show someone, great. If you just want to write it down for your own uh, purposes, for your for you to see when you feel some type of way about life, just to write it. It's um, it's therapeutic it's, it's it feels really good to write something down and then go back to it two or three months and be like wow like I was I was really feeling sad this day or like wow like that's a good feeling to have again like I was really in love that day or whatever the case is it's just something that it's um it's it, it's easy to do it's just writing very good last question for you is if you were to raise a child, what what are the most important thing would you like them to learn? Uh, kindness. I would want my child to be known as a person that everybody wants to go to and that having them around brings some peace, that they don't have to worry about getting mad. Or I, must, I'm, I know that humans will go through all types of emotions, but I would want my child to be known as the kind one, the one that helps, the one that protects, the one that stands up for others. And I don't know, just something that people gravitate to. Very good. Good one. Right, it's not the end yet. Let's play now the word association game, okay? I'm going to give away oh, okay. some words and just have one word that comes to your mind. Quick thinking. Okay. So, I hope you are enjoying the interview. Before we do the word association game, don't forget to give a like, don't forget to share this video, and also don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Just click on the bottom right there. Thank you so much and enjoy the word association game. Okay. Let's start with lies. Uh, gift. One word for love. Greatest thing. Money. Comes and goes. Family. Important. Sex. Great. Politics. Nonsense. Religion. Im important. Fear. Can be beaten. Friendship. Amazing. Regrets. No use for them. Desire. Um, attainable. Success. Not everything. One word for wish. I guess that one just stumped me. Um, wish, I guess the, what I would associate it with is just to keep wishing and just be wondrous. So. Amazing. One word for happiness. Uh, family. One word for Illinois. For Illinois? Yeah. Past. <laughs> <laughs> One word for Wisconsin. Uh, New Horizon. One word for USA. Land of the free. One word for Mexico. Home. And the last one now, poetry. One word. My life. Amazing. Let's pretend now we're going to meet your best friend for a coffee and I'm going to ask mm -hmm. your best friend, what is the most beautiful thing about Rene and what's something that he still needs to work on to improve on? What your best friend would say? I feel like my best friend would say that I am, I'm caring. I care a lot care a lot and I think that I need to work on being more accessible to people because I sometimes get in my head and I like to just be alone but I'm always checking up on people so it's kind of like I have to also give and I also have to be there in person too um, so I think that what that would be one of the things that I, I need to work on just do you see some work in progress yes definitely Amazing, amazing. <laughs> right, let's play now, Rene, in the magic box, and you can ask me a question. <laughs> okay, Rene, you can ask me a question now. I want to know your quote. 
what's what's a quote that you go by or what's a mantra that you live by beautiful 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 i love the question right i love quotes i think uh, quotes always when you see different quotes around you know social media or also you know on the on the public transports or in cars or anywhere yeah. i think it just I, i feel like it meant to be for me or it meant to be i meant to read that for some reason right Okay, um, I could tell you a few that I live by, but the first one that automatically came to, to my mind, Rene, is always be yourself. Don't be afraid to be yourself. Don't be afraid to yeah. be happy. Don't be afraid to express the way you are. The thing is, sometimes um, we, we can miss a lot of opportunities in our life, and sometimes we can also... Um, don't connect with the right people sometimes because we are not ourselves sometimes right. being yourself can be so magical and so interesting because people they're gonna come to you um or they're right. gonna admire you or they're gonna cross your the path right people the right people yeah, people who meant to be around you they're gonna right. come along if you are yourself so don't be afraid if um it's, it's something that uh you feel that is yourself but because of society or because of people around you or because of anything you feel like you shouldn't be yourself go right. across across that cross that try to be yourself you're not you're never going to please any, everyone anyway Excellent. so being yourself i think you can you know it's you, you feel more relaxed about life you feel more um you feel more calm as well because you are being yourself and people going to come right. to you they're going to cross your path because they can see the person who you are the truly person who you are so i think that right. would be my my one of the quotes that i live by and i try always to be myself because i know sometimes it can be difficult i know sometimes can right. be uh you know because i understand sometimes you need to you know um to behave in a way that because of work or because of the, the different situations but at least right. try to be yourself in that situation even though you cannot be 100% yourself but try to yeah. live your right. uh, live by the way you are because people they're going to appreciate that and even though you might not see the message straight away but in the future when you look back you go like oh my god i have the right people around me because i was myself because they like the way i am <laughs> they accept the way i am. So I think that is something very interesting and very um powerful as well if you be able I know it's not easy sometimes I know you know the no. world out there can be very scary sometimes I understand that as well but try to be yourself the most you can and um, and sometimes when you if you meet someone that you think is very interesting even though if you are insecure for some reason but be yourself because the person if yeah. if he's the right person to be around you is going to be it's going to happen if not it's okay it's okay so yeah that's one Fair of the I live by I live by yes yes is there lost that's what i believe as well so you're doing great because you're very you're very charismatic and you're very very positive i just feel this great vibe from you so you're doing great Oh, thank you so much. Thank you so much. I think I I try. I tried my my best and I think as well uh I think uh you know when I have my guests on the show as well when they can see that I I'm trying to be myself they feel more comfortable as well and they can be themselves as well. Very. But I think that's the 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 the, the most interesting part um that I like. I like connecting with people, you know. Of course now I'm connecting with people around the globe, but when I when I, I meet people, you know, in situations in parties or you know in whatever and I try to be myself always because you never know you could be there your best friend you could be there your partner you could be there people right. who's gonna you know so be yourself you know be yourself and uh, beautiful things will come along that's what i believe perfect <laughs> renee did you have a good time to enjoy the interview i had a great great time Yes, I did. Thank you so much for taking the time. Thanks for being so open as well about your your life, about your, you know, the way you 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 face life. I think that's uh, again, be yourself. That's uh, one of the things that yep. you should live by. Always. <laughs> Before you go, if you'd like to share a positive message or a positive quote or maybe also just uh, say one of your poetry as well, be amazing. <laughs> um I I don't know any of them by heart. Um but I think um I think the quote that I mentioned earlier um and also when you asked me about writing too um anybody that is going through something um or anybody that feels like they're alone you're not uh you're not the first person going through it you won't be the last 
if you need help with anything, if you want to reach out, there's a lot of people around you. And if you if you need to talk, there's always going to be somebody willing to listen. Uh, you're not alone. And um, there's there's a lot of people that love you. A lot of people. So um, don't take anything for granted. Um, live like it's your last day. Um, and just reach out if you're in need. Amazing, amazing. You saying that made me remember remember something. I was talking to my best friend a, a while ago, and I, he was, you know, having a, a challenge, not a challenge. I would say a melancholic moment. And I just told, I just told him, I said, "Look, just remember that you're not the only person feeling that way. Sometimes when you are feeling down for some reason, we tend, we tend to feel like, oh my God, it's just happening to me, but not." It, it, for sure, there are a lot of people out there, um, you know, feeling the same for some reason as well. And sometimes if you speak out, if you talk about, you're going to realize that you're going to feel more relieved as well. And the pain is going to yeah. be less, a little bit less. So I took that. Rene, thank you so much. Thanks for the interview and keep in touch. Have a lovely weekend, okay? Thank you so much. Take okay. care. Okay? Fantastic. Thank you for having me. See ya. Bye-bye. See you. So, did you like the show? Don't forget to give a like, share it, and also don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And if you'd like to be part of the show as well, first, subscribe to our channel, and after that, just go to our website, www.williamandthemagicbox.com, and send us a request saying why would you like to be part of the show. And I'll see you there. Bye-bye, see you next time.